Hail to the King, baby! It's time for yet another The Crown album, Crown in Thorns, from Sweden. And this is the 12th album by this long time running band from Sweden, which is mostly known for their aggressive, uh, speedy, dead thrash metal of melodic kind. Now, a lot of people are gonna mention that the Gates, being the kings of this given genre or subgenre, that's debatable, but the Crown is definitely right up in the alley, uh, being one of the best ones in the genre. And uh, I was lucky enough to get a new copy of this new album of True Metal, Blade Records, which released this one already a while ago in uh, early October. And uh, this is Curious Pants because it has gone through a rather bumpy road, meaning while the lineup has been quite steady for quite some time, there has been a few changes over the years as with all the bands. I mean, this already started late 90s under the moniker Crown of Thorns. And uh, since then, a lot of things have changed, obviously. And uh, this is the current version. Some members are still very, very uh, much of the old days, that is late 90s. We have at least three members. But during those years, the band has had the Bambi ride. It has ceased to exist at least once. Uh, this is debatable if there are more than once. And there have been name changes and what have you. And even the vocalists have been changed. But now, once again, uh, for quite some time, the band has been back. So, in a way, Circle has been completed now that Crown of Thorns is the album name, because that's what they started in the uh, early 90s. And uh, since 2000, uh, sorry, since 1998, 1998, the band has operated under the moniker The Crown. But this is not the only Crown or King or Royal Reference when it comes to the history of this band, more than 30 years in the making. I mean, second album, Death Race King. Uh, or what about Crown in Terror, 2002. Or Crowned Unholy, 2004. And once again, another King album, Doomsday King, 2010. So this royal theme, even with the previous album, Royal Destroyer, has been a kind of a... A continuous, long-running joke, not so much a joke, but a pun towards the whole thing here, the crown, which is, of course, a symbol of uh, someone, you know, being in a royal position, you know, sitting on a throne or whatever. So, and we, as, as we all know, there are plenty of bands with all kind of thrones. So, the crown is not that far-fetched, really, if you think about it. And, of course, Crown of Thorns is a name that has kind of a biblical meaning so, very fitting for a band that is operating around death, Satan, and violence, right? So, while it doesn't really sound like a typical metal name, obviously those who have been long enough in the metal scene know that The Crown is a kind of a household name for this given style, and that is very, very Swedish. I mean, after all, we're talking about the very, very same genre that At The Gates and some other bands operate in, and you can clearly see it if you open this similar artists tab on Metal Archives. There's a reason why I have voted, for example, At The Gates and Crown of Thorns among the similar bands, and At The Gates is, of course, leading by a big number. But there are other bands also coming from Sweden, which are here mentioned, like The Haunted or Defleshed. Even a Finnish band, Dead Chain, is mentioned quite high up here, and it goes for a reason. Death and Thrash. When they are married to one another, that's how it goes. And bands like Deusin, that very, very much the same here. But what separates these from a lot of other bands and why these are leading is that you have to add melodic adjective before the style. So while At The Gates is listed here as melodic death metal and Crown of Thorns melodic death thrash, much like The Crown is here listed as melodic death thrash, these are, of course, so much like, uh, you know, drones, uh, you know, Lines drawn in water, meaning sometimes when you're talking about old school trash metal, old school death metal, 
they are kind of inseparable. I mean, let's argue about being possessed and all. But that goes beyond the scope of this video, of course, just kind of pointing out how things can be very, very much intertwined, linked to one another, connected and all. And yet at the same time, they can have and will have unique um, abilities, attributes and all. And that's what makes, for example, the crown sound, sound so powerful and good band. Now, if you were to ask me, and I think you should totally, uh, this is one of the bands that is leading the very given genre, melodic to a trash. And even if you remove melodic, still, this is one of the better bands out there to support this style, to play this style and represent it. And for a reason, they have been doing it quite some time. And I mean, there's a reason why they are one of the leading names here. And uh, sometimes when I was listening to this album, it kind of comes to my mind that if people are looking for something like Arch Enemy, but they wanted more power, more aggression, more the trashiness, whereas Arch Enemy goes for the more melodic and now called female fronted stuff. If they want a more masculine version in a way, well, the crown is right there. But this is not about battle between the bands and all that stuff, just kind of a pointers here and there. So what do we really want to talk about when we talk about Crown of Thorns, the album, not the band? almost 55 minutes and 13 tracks that's quite a lot to swallow it's quite a pill this is the album in question uh, indeed and it's fi almost 55 minutes and that's in <laughs> that's quite a lot when we're talking about you know albums which are loaded with aggression, speed, uh, violence, all that stuff, it can be quite a load. And sometimes you're like, okay, I'm done with 35 minutes and phew, that was already a ride and I don't need more. But what about if I was to tell you that, yeah, that's actually what you really want to go even further, even more when the songwriting is that good. And you're like, sure. And that's the beauty of this given album. While it's not a game changer in terms of quality and style, I mean, all the parts click nicely together. I mean, you have the aggression, you have the vocals, you have the guitar works, you have the drumming, you have the production. Everything is here, you know, catered to this particular need, which is the melodic depth trash metal. Nothing here is outstanding in terms of like, can you really include song like this on an album like this given genre? And I think it's outstanding in the sense like, is this going to change how you perceive the whole band? Not likely. But this is exactly what you're looking for, what you're expecting to get from the crown. The quality, the songwriting, everything I just listed is right here. So while this is not exactly the most, how to say, hit-oriented band, I can only imagine how strong this current lineup is with the given albums. I mean, Royal Destroyer was already a really, really good album, and this is basically picking up from where that left off. And as such, I can only imagine how good this is on stage, because the energy is right there. This is loaded with fury, aggression, passion, skill, and talent, and will to perform it like melodic trash metal should be in the first place. So while not exactly a revolutionary album when it comes to the given style, given genre and all, I think this is one of the better ones in the game. And as such, it goes quite high up, in my opinion, when we're talking about the albums of year 2024. Now, it's a little bit too early to announce any kind of winners or lists. I mean, we're not even November yet, but we're closing towards the end of year, and I can pretty much say this is going to be quite high up in the list. Why so? Because it's a good album. It's really, really good in the given genre. And everybody who uh, just likes, you know, uh, melodic death trash metal or melodic death or melodic trash, doesn't matter if you don't like them even put together combined like that. But if you do, even better for you, because this is indeed one of the best albums in the given genre, especially for this particular year. So, Maybe a future classic, who knows, that remains to be seen. I mean, maybe in 20 years we will talk about this album. Maybe not, hard to tell, but at least it has all the qualities, all the necessary ingredients to make it up for that. So, there is that. Go check it out. You will have links included in the description box. Let's keep our thumbs up that I get to see actually this live soon. And maybe, I don't know, 
goddamn interview. So, until next time, bye bye.